Everyone wants their Disney World trip to be perfect. It's basically guaranteed that it won't be though, but that doesn't stop people from getting seriously angry when things don't go according to plan. That's why we're talking about bizarre things that make people furious in Disney World today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. During your Disney World trips, you're bound to encounter multiple toddlers having meltdowns, but have you ever seen an adult have a meltdown? The answer is probably yes. Maybe it was even you. When things go wrong during a Disney trip, people can sometimes have a tendency to freak out over little things that wouldn't have as much of an impact at home. Now, I think I know why we do this, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later in this video, but first, let's talk about the 17 things that enrage people in Disney World. First is change. Yep, just change in Disney World can cause really, really sincere anger and frustration in Disney fans. People don't like major changes that mess with the preconceived ideas they had about their Disney trip. And who would, right? But it's all about how you handle it. This can pretty much be applied to any serious change that takes place, like major policy changes, big construction projects, you name it. But one of the most prominent examples of this right now is the addition of the huge and very distracting barges that have made their way into World Showcase Lagoon in preparation for Epcot's upcoming fireworks show, Harmonious. There are two big taco-shaped barges, actually I think there are three now, along with a six-story tall metal ring, aka the show's centerpiece, that sometimes looks like an upside-down spider. So while construction and testing are going on, these can be pretty distracting, and unsurprisingly, people really aren't liking them. The barges disrupt your once gorgeous view across the lagoon to the other side of the showcase, but eventually these barges will serve as elaborate fountains during the day and double as part of the fireworks show at night. Now, we don't have a debut date for the show, so for now, we're just looking at the big old metal things. And some people are pretty cranky about it when it's probably best to just let it go. Another thing along the same lines is when alcohol was introduced in Magic Kingdom. Walt Disney was against alcohol being served in his park, so in Magic Kingdom, which was the last dry park in Disney World, introduced alcohol service in Be Our Guest Restaurant in 2012. People were really shocked. Now, there's no denying that Disney World is an incredibly popular destination for families with young kids, so some people are against alcohol being served anywhere in the parks. On the flip side, some guests are also annoyed at the fact that they won't find any alcoholic to-go beverages in Magic Kingdom. You can't walk around with a beer. If you're gonna order alcohol in Magic Kingdom, you have to do it inside a table service restaurant. This rule is different compared to the other parks, so it may come as a surprise to guests when they can't drink around the kingdom. So surrounding the alcohol rules in Magic Kingdom, people find a lot of reasons to be really angry. All right, another thing that makes people kind of irrationally mad in Disney World are those long, unexpected waits. In Disney World, if there's one thing you can expect to always be doing, it's waiting. Whether you're waiting in line for a ride, waiting to pick up food, or waiting for transportation, it's a necessity when you're there. Now, during a time when FastPass service exists, you'll commonly come across guests yelling at a cast member, but what do you mean I had to book this previously? You can't just let me in the line? No one told me I had to do it before. In this case, failure to plan ahead means failure to meet the perfect vision of your vacation that you created in your head. In current day Disney World, waiting comes in many forms and some of them are unexpected. Wait times for transportation may be different than you once remembered since buses, boats, and monorails need to enforce social distancing guidelines. Fewer people are getting on those vehicles at once, meaning you're probably gonna be waiting a little bit longer. People seriously hate waiting in these lines because it's not just something you would necessarily factor in when thinking about getting from place to place. Buses might take 20 minutes to show up, and if there's a big line ahead of you, you may have to wait for one or two buses before you actually get on. Another waiting period that can really cause a meltdown is for mobile order food pickup. Mobile order is something that most quick service restaurants in Disney World are using right now. It allows you to order your food through the My Disney Experience app and you choose a pickup window when you want to get your food. And by pickup window, that's a time, not an actual physical place. Well, on especially busy days, we've seen those pickup windows fill up in advance. So if you want to eat at noon, you can't just order at 11.45 because that noontime pickup window is going to be totally full. 
so sometimes you're left with a multiple hour wait before you can get your food. Even once the pickup window arrives to pick up your food, we've had times where we've waited upwards of 20 minutes plus before our food was actually ready, especially if you're eating in a particularly busy time. Unprepared guests may find this especially frustrating since it's essentially advertised as a quicker way to get your food. You're trying to get to the next ride, you're trying to get to the next thing you've got to do, you've got a hungry toddler. And when you realize that all of the pickup windows are filled up and sold out and even even if you can try to get food right now, it's going to take 30 minutes. Yeah, that's really frustrating. So you are in the right place. Watching DFB Guide is going to prepare you for all this. You guys are going to know that you got to mobile order your food three hours earlier than you expected and that your wait might be a little bit long. You're going to have snacks packed to make sure that nobody gets hangry. And you totally understand how fast pass works when it comes back. So we're going to save you the time, the hassle and the frustration of getting irrationally angry in Disney World because you're waiting for stuff you weren't prepared for. Okay, another thing people get really mad about in Disney World are weird transportation quirks. Now, there are a couple of things that are a little strange about Disney World transportation that you wouldn't know if you hadn't experienced it before. When it's not as easy and straightforward as it should seem, folks can get cranky. An example of one of these quirks is the fact that you can't get a bus from Disney Springs directly to the theme parks. You have to hop on a bus to one of the resorts from Disney Springs and then onto another mode of transportation to get to a park, which is pretty weird and might be unexpected. I think Disney's goal here is to make it so that people aren't parking for free at Disney Springs and then taking buses to the parks. Right now, buses from the parks to Disney Springs don't start running until 4 p.m. Another quirk is that not all Disney resorts offer bus transportation to Blizzard Beach Water Park. There are buses from Disney's All-Star Movies Resort and Coronado Springs Resort, but if you're not staying at either of those hotels, you've got some planning to do. Disney recommends taking a bus to Animal Kingdom, where you can then transfer to a Blizzard Beach bus. So if you're trying to wrangle the kids in their swimsuits early in the morning before making your way to the water park just to realize it's gonna take you much longer than expected to get there, yeah, that can be an unexpected and unhappy surprise. Another bizarre thing that gets people real, real mad in Disney World is the rush before the show. So back when fireworks and parades were a thing, sometimes you would spend hours holding that perfect spot to view the show. Then just minutes before the show would start, there would be that family that would somehow squeeze their way in and totally block your view. That's something that seriously makes people mad in Disney World, and maybe rightfully so. So if you're the person who holds your spot for hours before a show, just be aware that that could completely be all for nothing once the show begins. And also, don't be that family. Don't be the ones who go and edge into that teeny tiny space in front of somebody else. That's not cool. Just be cool. Okay, another slight inconvenience that makes people furious in Disney World has been the switch from plastic to paper straws and also getting rid of plastic lids. Now listen, I know that sometimes those paper straws can make drinking things like milkshakes and slushies real hard, but a little beforehand preparation is something that can make this issue a little more bearable. Pack some metal straws or silicon straws in your park bag. They're small and light and can help avoid any frustration at the straw that's disintegrating before your eyes. Another major issue in this realm is the lack of plastic lids for cups and water, soda, etc. That seriously grinds people's gears, but it's all in an effort to make Disney World more eco-friendly. And over recent years, Disney's made the effort to remove single-use toiletries from resort rooms. Those little bottles of shampoo and conditioner are no more in some of the rooms, and instead you'll find refill toiletries in the resort rooms. These bottles are refilled and sanitized before you check in, but if you're just not into refillable shampoo, I get it, and I recommend you bring some from home. All right, you knew this would be on this list, Rise of the Resistance boarding groups, okay. Rise of the Resistance in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is undeniably the most popular ride in Disney World right now, and might even be the reason some people decide to plan a trip in the first place. That said, it's also probably one of the most hope-crushing experiences in all of Disney World on a regular basis. Basis. The only way to ride this attraction is by scoring one of the highly sought after boarding groups which act as a virtual queue for the ride. They become available twice a day and fill up almost immediately the majority of the time. If you're not well versed in the tips and tricks of getting a boarding group, you probably won't be lucky enough to get one. Luckily, we've got a quick cheat sheet that will help you stay on top of everything you need to know to improve your chances of getting a boarding group. Head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash RiseTips to get a free printable download. 
Another thing that guests might find bizarre is the fact that they'll need to be up bright and early just to try to get a chance to experience this ride. Boarding groups open at 7 a.m. and even though you're able to secure one from outside of the park, aka from the comfort of your resort's bed, it's still a pretty bizarre concept that some people may just not be able to wrap their heads around. All right, our next thing that enrages people in Disney World, of course, the weather. Aha, Florida weather. There's nothing more unpredictable or more capable of throwing a wrench in your plans for the day. It is uncontrollable and it gets people really, really heated. I can remember when I used to run evening events in Disney World, I would have fireworks dessert parties in Epcot for DFB readers. They could get tickets to join me for a fireworks dessert party in Epcot. And I had the whole menu planned out. It was all my favorite foods from everywhere in Disney World. It was so much fun. But oh my goodness, the absolute stress of watching the weather for the week before that event happened. Because, you know, of course it's going to rain every day in Florida for most months of the year. And you just never know when that big storm is going to come. And so fireworks dessert parties, you know, if they don't show the fireworks because of a storm, then everybody's sort of really, really disappointed, even though they get to still eat the food and we go indoors. It's not the same. And so I probably am going to have a heart attack 15 years before I would normally have had a heart attack because of those events that we threw and watching the weather and being so stressed out. And sometimes it can be hard to prepare for what the weather's gonna throw at you when you're there. It might be crazy sweltering hot during the day and then at night you're shivering and dropping 50 bucks on a sweatshirt. Maybe you bought a $12 poncho in preparation for a storm and then it's gone and you're left with a damp poncho and out $12. Well, inclement weather can also mean that some of your favorite outdoor rides are closed too. If it's the last day of your vacation and the ride you saved until the last minute isn't expected to reopen, yeah, people get real upset. So plan ahead, buy that poncho for $2 at home before you even get to Disney. Pack layers and don't leave outdoor rides until the very last moment of your trip. Make sure to ride those guys in the morning to have the best possible chance of avoiding a ride closure. And also guys, when FastPass comes back, don't make fast passes for outdoor door rides in the afternoon. Always make those fast passes for things like that in the morning. All right, another thing that enrages people in Disney World, the prices, and especially the price of food. Now, it's no surprise that a Disney World trip is going to cost you, but there are a few different things that make you realize just how expensive it really is. One of those is that price of food. If you're splurging on a top-notch upscale meal, then yeah, you're going to drop some serious dough. But it's the little and often super expensive things that can send people right over the edge. Back at home, you just wouldn't spend $7 on a soft pretzel, or at least I don't think you would. But in Disney World, twist that thing in the shape of a Mickey head and boom, you can kiss seven bucks goodbye. We just saw a major price increase on an iconic Magic Kingdom snack, the spring rolls from the spring roll cart near Adventureland. These things are pretty small and now they cost $9.50 for two of them. They used to cost $7.50 and that was crazy expensive. So when you don't expect to pay the big bucks for the little things, people get stressed and cranky. They didn't plan for that. So plan out your food budget in advance. Keep an eye on us here at DFB Guide. Read Disney Food Blog. We've got all the prices there. And give your budget some extra padding to account for the unexpected Mickey-shaped snack you will inevitably get. All right, something else that bugs people about Disney World, ride refurbishments. This is a big one, you guys. Like I said earlier, a failure to plan and research before your Disney World trip will leave you feeling disappointed, annoyed, and angry. I can almost guarantee it. So ride refurbishments are commonplace for Disney World. What that means is that they close down a ride to refurbish it. They need to paint. They need to change some electronics. They need to, I don't know, replace the batteries, whatever they do with these rides. And they're doing a lot of it right now. As the parks gear up for the 50th anniversary in October, there is major work being done all over the parks. This has led to extended closures and overall more areas throughout the parks under undergoing maintenance. It's easy to find out what's going to be closed during your trip in advance though. This is something a lot of people don't realize. We write a blog post every week that tells you what's going to be closed this week and Disney World also has on their website a refurbishment schedule so you can go and look when you're planning your trip and see, oh, Splash Mountain's going to be closed while I'm there. Well, I better pick a different time. 
So just taking a minute to find out what's going to be closed during the time frames you might be going to Disney World could absolutely impact your vacation and prevent the possibility of you being completely blindsided. All right, another thing that has gotten people furious in recent years are the smoking rules. One hard and fast Disney rule is that there's to be no smoking in the parks. It shouldn't come as a surprise that in Disney World you just can't smoke anywhere you want to. At each park, you'll find a designated smoking area just outside the entrance. And now some guests see this as a major inconvenience and can put up a fight with cast members because they don't want to follow that rule. But in Disney World, rules are rules and Disney doesn't really care if you don't want to follow them. So making a cast member's life miserable because you don't like the rule isn't going to change the rule and it's just making somebody miserable. Another extremely strict rule in the Disney parks right now is that you gotta wear a face covering at all times. An approved face covering, by the way. Disney's mask policies have been clear cut since the parks reopened last summer, leaving essentially no room for confusion about when and where you need to wear a mask and what kinds of masks you are allowed to wear. Even when things change, signs are everywhere, and Disney even has cast members tasked with just making sure guests follow the rules around mask wearing. Guests to and up are required to wear face coverings unless actively eating or drinking while stationary and safely distanced from other guests or when they're in a relaxation station or in a pool. There's not a whole bunch to remember there and there is plenty of signage placed throughout the parks as a constant reminder. And even though it's been over eight months since the parks introduced these rules, there are still guests who don't wanna comply. People become furious over being told to wear their masks or put them on correctly so that it's covering both their nose and mouth. If you refuse to wear a mask, well, you get removed from the parks. The rules are clear, so there's no reason to be shocked when you're asked to follow them. And again, there's no reason to make a cast member's life miserable because you don't want to follow the rules. All right, so we're seeing a pretty big theme of people not wanting to be told what to do in Disney World. Another example of this is when they have to stand within a certain area. This is especially the case for fireworks or parade viewings. Designated areas are taped off by cast members, which allows them to keep walkways and other locations open for safety reasons. Although there's a very visible barrier telling you where and where not to be, along with a live person reminding you to please stay behind the line, people want that perfect viewing spot and they don't understand why they can't stand there. This stuff is to keep crowds under control, provide safe walkways for those not standing in that crowd and emergencies. And could you imagine if Main Street had no walking paths during the fireworks or parades just so everyone could have a perfect view? What if there was an emergency? What if you needed to get out of the park immediately? You benefit from these rules and so does everybody else. So show up to find a spot a little bit earlier so you're not trying to squeeze yourself just over that tape line. Okay, now this one I will admit I am guilty of. And that's sharing a ride vehicle. Some guests don't like sharing. They don't want to share a ride vehicle or Skyliner gondola with another party. And that is how I feel. I don't like sharing my ride vehicle or my Skyliner because mostly because I'm shy and very introverted and I get exhausted when I have to make small talk. So I totally get this one, but there can be a lot of people in Disney World. And if every single family got their own ride vehicle, wait times would be a lot longer. Currently due to social distancing guidelines, you might be lucky enough to score your own vehicle on rides and your own Skyliner, but otherwise making a fuss over not getting your VIP designated space will just hold up the line and frustrate everyone behind you. So if you request to ride alone and a cast member says no, just leave it be and let it go. The next thing that seriously makes Disney fans mad is missing planned must-do activities. Think about it. You booked your trip a year in advance and you're looking forward to riding all your favorite rides and eating at some of Disney's most popular restaurants. And then when it's finally time for your trip, you miss out on a bunch of those things because no one told you you needed to book a fast pass or make a reservation or the lines would be long. Yeah, this isn't news for frequent Disney goers. And if you don't already know it, consider this your warning. You do actually need to do some planning before you go to Disney World. Things are changing all the time and it's best to stay up to date in the months, weeks, and days before your trip on the things that are new and the things that are changing. Disney World inspires serious FOMO, fear of missing out, and everybody wants to do everything. Your best way to get as much of that stuff in as you can is to watch these videos, hang out with us here in DFB Guide. <laughs> Read our blog posts, follow us on social media. We're in the parks every single day. We're telling you literally every single thing that changes and that's new. So if you need to be kept up to date, 
That's how to do it. Also join our newsletter. It's totally free and we tell you everything that's going on in Disney World. We deliver it right to your inbox and give you planning tips and updated recommendations and information as well. So that's the best way to keep up to date on what's going on to know all the changes, but you're still gonna experience FOMO in Disney World. You're still gonna worry, you're gonna miss out on stuff, but this is the way to have the best opportunity to do everything you wanna do. All right, now, even though Disney World rides undergo maintenance pretty frequently, they do have technical difficulties where they break down and close. So our next thing that people get real mad about in Disney World are those ride malfunctions. Sometimes these closures can last 30 minutes and sometimes they can have unexpected and prolonged closures. Back in January, Rock and Roller Coaster unexpectedly closed for five days in a row. Think about it, that would be the duration of your entire trip. Don't worry, nobody was actually on the ride for five days. Or another example is the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover. Oh, it's been closed for over a year and they keep teasing us. They keep saying it's gonna reopen. It was supposed to reopen in November and then December and then January. It's still closed. And something else that people get real weird about is when rides themselves have tiny malfunctions. We've seen Anna lose her face and Elsa forget the words to let it go on Frozen Ever After. And the beloved host of the Carousel of Progress, John, once lost his hand while sharing his love for, well, progress. Even though this is another thing that's out of guests' control, there can definitely be some anger involved, especially if someone's little kid is freaked out about Elsa acting creepily. When rides have bigger malfunctions, like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway has no projections, you you might get to ride again. But some rides do have B modes, like when the shaman at Navi River Journey needs some work and instead you just get to see a screen with the character projected rather than the impressive animatronic, which can be a bummer but doesn't completely ruin the experience. And honestly, this entire video can be summed up by our last point here. People get mad anytime something goes wrong or differently than they expected in Disney World. The weather isn't what you wanted it to be. Your resort's pool is closed for refurbishment. You had no idea. You're shocked to find Mickey Mouse will definitely not hug your kid right now. And you can add another level of fury because you spent so much money. It's okay to have high expectations for your Disney World trip, but you need to be flexible when things go wrong and you also need to plan ahead. That is your biggest insurance against things going wrong. If you plan ahead and know what to do in advance when things do go wrong, it's gonna make your trip a whole lot easier, I promise. So these are some of the weird things that really infuriate people in Disney World. In order to minimize these situations, you know it comes down to planning, understanding how much money you can realistically spend without feeling like your trip has to be absolutely perfect to get the ROI for it, and expecting the unexpected. Are you surprised by some of these irritating things or have you found yourself getting frustrated because of them a few times? I know I have, so I'm totally there with you if you guys have been frustrated by this stuff before too. So this is your big old PSA, your big old warning. This stuff is gonna happen. Be prepared for it. Please be prepared for it. I want you to have a great trip and the best way to do it is to plan ahead. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.